Craft Bros. Casual conversations. Drinking a fruit beer. I'm Drew. I'm Rob. It's Dudes with Bros. Intro. <laughs> that's, that's good. You're about to hear the greatest show of your life. It's like Eeyore from, from Winnie the Pooh. Rob? True. Do you like jam bands? Are you a jam band kind of guy? Uh, I like some jam bands. Fish? Not a fish fan. I don't like them either. Grateful Dead? Some of their stuff is good. Meat puppets? I don't know the meat puppets. No? No. Nirvana was a big meat, meat, puppets, meat puppets fan. I saw the meat puppets at Summerfest. They, were, they played before Alkaline Trio one year. And they were very old. I swear, I thought the bass player was about to die. He looked like he was having a stroke on stage. And uh, they just jammed and jammed and jammed. And I was like, I don't get it. But anyways. Um, There's some a- good ones. I do like, like yeah. uh, I like a, a combination where it's like bands that will, um, you know, they've got their songs that they, and then they, they just kind of lengthen them when they that's play what they, Yeah, that's what you know, me puppets Because like, there's, there's bands that literally, like, they just don't stop playing for, and, and they have no real structure. Because uh, there's some bands that, jam bands that, there's literally no depth to their lyrics or anything. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, they just, it's like, oh, we're jamming, we're jamming, and, and I'm going to say some, some uh, love, peace, hippie stuff uh, over the top of it every once in a while, and and uh, if you like that, that's great. But uh, you know, I, I I like it when there's a little thought behind the lyrics. I guess. Me too, but um, maybe we'll like the jam band beer, Rob, from Boulevard Brewing Company, from our friends in Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah, I love our friends in Kansas City, Missouri. Is is Kansas City is M O Missouri? Is that right? Okay. No. Yes. That's no. good. Yep. I don't know. Yeah, Missouri. Yeah. I don't know what else it would be. Um, Jam Band, it bursts onto the scene this year as an improvised fusion of a dark berry flavors and zippy citrus chords. The rhythmic grooves of blueberry, raspberry, and tart cherry accompany a simple malt base to create an easy drinking, all season beer worthy of an encore. Bum, bum, bum. I mean the I like the I like the artwork. It is uh, very berry fla- very. Oh yeah, it looks like I, I, we. I tend like, to like these uh, juicy these red juice. red colored beers that we do. Uh, it smells like some juicy juice. Looks like juice. It looks like some fucking cranberry juice, dog. You know. Yeah, it didn't foam up very much when I poured it. Nope, not a lot of head to it. It's uh, it's, let's, let's try it. Okay, it smells good though. It smells very good. You know, it tastes like it tastes like juice. Yeah, it does. Got a little sour kick to it. For when you want to get your kids drunk, jam band. <laughs> hey, it says it on the can. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's not bad, but it's also uh, not if I'm if I want to drink a beer. I guess I. Uh... Rob, uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was. Uh, you brought up the show a couple times on the show, the dollop. Yep. They're under some scrutiny. Did you see that? No, they're coming to Madison and Milwaukee, some, though, pretty soon. Some plagiarism claims from a live show that they did. So on the dollop, they read like... Yeah, history, uh, obscure history stuff that they do research on and all that and... Do research on it, and then they they kind of riff they, on it. One guy doesn't. One guy yeah, tells one, it. One, one guy doesn't know the story, and one guy tells him the story, and he kind of makes fun of things as it goes. And the guy that doesn't know the story, Gareth, is actually from Wisconsin. Oh, cool! But uh, um, an author out there wrote an article about uh, the welfare queen. Uh, they did a live show on on. I think I listened to that one about the. It's one of their most uh, popular 
episodes, one of the most downloaded episodes, referred to an awful lot. And in the live show, Rob, the one guy who tells a story, tells a history, yeah, almost verbatim, read this person's article. And didn't say quote beforehand. Normally he says quote, because they quote a lot of stuff. Didn't, uh, like, when, um, but just um, pretty much read the whole article. They did list the that article in their notes, I think, on iTunes, maybe. Yeah, they normally source everything. But not... Uh, but this guy's saying that it's plagiarism because not if he they sourced it. But they didn't source it in the live show. They made money off of it, off of this. They, they were yeah, paid to do it. So is that it? They don't, why, what do you mean they didn't source it and they didn't say it out loud? They, they never say it out loud. Where they get they put it all in their notes on the podcast. Yeah. It's a podcast. I, I fucking hate the world. You don't have to yell at me. Day. I'm so. Uh, <laughs> it's like get over yourself. He, if he, they sourced it in their material. Yeah, but he's just mad because. Uh, obviously, like the riffs, the oh, jokes. Was he getting a ton of uh, of uh, uh, advertisement outside of the dollop? What was this guy's name? Bet you don't remember if you can if you don't look. <laughs> You're right, I don't. Yeah, yeah, and we wouldn't even be talking about it right now. Uh, but I don't even want to say his name because he doesn't deserve it. They sort I mean, if they sourced him in the material on on their like cited it on the podcast uh, page and on you know because like even on Podcoin you can click on their sources. And uh, it's like, of course they didn't source it my, out loud. My concern, Rob, is uh, on our Strange Brew episodes. Yeah, we never source anything. We don't even put that on our site. No, <laughs> we don't. Uh, Come and get us, motherfuckers. We don't, uh, we don't source um, the the articles that we use in our notes or or talk about it. Nor, do we, nor, you, nor do we remember where we got the... I uh, couldn't tell you. I could you. not tell you. Um, so are we plagiarizing? Are we plagiarists? I th- I, I honestly thought that uh, if it's I, mean, there. I mean we we we're like, not profiting by any means. Just like just like the dollop, uh, it's like it's clear when they're reading off somebody else's shit, right? Uh, and they do cite all their their sources because they have to because it's in their in their uh, show notes. Yeah. Yes, they don't do it out loud, but who? I don't think I don't think you need to. My concern is us. We say we're reading it, though. What happens if we get uber famous? You know, we ditch this this Wisconsin lifestyle and we hit the the fucking big, big then, time. Then, then we tell people go back and listen to an, to episode one hundred and eight. <laughs> we discuss plagiarism and yeah. how we don't. Maybe we're doing it, but we don't feel like uh, we should be persecuted for it. So maybe going forward, we'll, we should put articles in the notes, huh? I don't know. I, I guess uh, let's say it out loud right now. Our strange brews are based on other people's research that we then researched again later and uh, probably read verbatim. Isn't that what all research is nowadays, though? Yeah. It's a Unless collective. you're experimenting with you're, stuff. You're like, right. But like, if you're l- looking into a topic, Astonishing Legends, same thing. Yeah. They, and, and they, Astonishing Legends never comes right out and says, this is the, the article that I got this from or this or that. They put it all in their show notes. Yeah. And they say, you can go to the show notes. To well, find we don't even do that. Them. Yeah, we don't do that. I'm talking more for the dollar's <laughs> sake. Uh, for us, God, I... I uh, we need to do better, Rob. Yeah. We need to be better people and cite these works of, of BuzzFeed articles and, and other things like that. I guess so. So well, we've got a lot of work to do this coming learned. month. Yeah, we do. Yeah, you know, but but again, we aren't profiting. We don't have advertisers often. Yep. Um. So I mean, does it doesn't really matter. I don't think so, but I don't think so either. Um. I mean, we're not. We're also not saying, oh, we wrote this. Like, we're not trying to take credit for it. And just like uh, I'm sure that the, I mean, it's pretty clear on the dollop too, where they don't go, I wrote this, this out and now I'm going to read it to my friend. Uh, no, yeah. they say, this is the research that I did. Uh, and it's clearly not, you know, it's like, cause plagiarism is trying to pass something off that somebody else did as your own. Right. And, and that's not really what, it, that, what we're that's, doing. That's not what we're doing. And we're clearly saying this is, we got like, I'm reading this off of a site and whatever. And yeah, I just don't want to be a criminal. Well, you know, sometimes you just are. Yeah. Deal with it, Drew. Does uh, it keep you up at night? Nope. Because that's when criminals are awake. 
<laughs> you know what keeps me up at night? A lot of things, Rob. Bad podcast sites. Bad Use omens. Use Podcoin. Bad omens. I don't know. Nothing keeps me up at night. I'm, I'm, I'm able to fall asleep pretty easily, usually. Which is nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's all I had to talk about. Oh, wow. We're, we're in deep for this one because I got nothing. You got nothing? I don't think I have anything to talk about. We just saw each other on Friday. I'm leaving. I'm skipping town this week on Thursday. Taking my kids and taking my, my lady friend. We're taking a little road trip to Minnesota. What's going on there? Going to my Grammy's house. Nice. Yeah, she lives on a lake. So Labor Day weekend, you know. Yeah. Get yeah. that little bonus day off. Drive back on Monday and then um, got uh, school for the kiddos. On oh, it starts on up now. Yeah. yeah. Ashley's going to be in kindergarten. Madison will be in fifth grade. Dang. Ashley's school is huge for living in a, a quote unquote village. And an elementary school that's like as big as a high school. Is it still friendship? Yeah. It's huge though. They re- completely rebuilt it. Oh. Yeah. It's nuts. Well. Huge, dude. Then he has every opportunity to Yeah. Something. To to grow, to learn. Hopefully he doesn't cheat on tests and uh because that's bad. Well, just teach him how to source. You should never material. <laughs> don't don't become a, a plagiarist, and uh, don't don't cheat. Learn from my mistakes. Don't cheat on tests. You can cheat on your diet every once in a while. You know you you've earned it. Um, I feel like you're projecting. Other than that, you know, cheating's bad. Yeah, I cheated on tests. Uh, I didn't have to cheat on tests, really. Oh, must be nice, Mr. But I never did my homework. Brainiac over here. Well, I barely, uh, I would, no, not, I mean, I didn't have to cheat on tests to get C's. Yeah. Yeah. But I also, like, I was just, I didn't study for, I was a bad student, you know. I don't think I ever cheated in college, though. So that's good. In college, I I did, I worked my ass off to do things very, uh, well in college. Yeah. Uh, and I took online classes, so there was really no way to like. I never if, took. I, I could have easily just like for the tests. There were open book tests anyway, but uh, when I wrote my papers and stuff, I was very thorough. I never cheated on tests in college because I was afraid, you know, I'd definitely get caught somehow and get expelled. You know what I have been looking into a little bit lately huh. this week What's is that? Uh, quantum mechanics. And why? quantum entanglement. Why would you? Why would you do that? Um, well, because honestly, I'm, I'm a bit, like I normally am a I'm subscriber, subscriber to string theory and uh, what space string time. Was that um, string theory? Is it's it's like a multi dimensional breakdown of you, you, like it's basically that uh, atoms break down into, you know, uh, neutrons and protons and electrons, which break down into photons. And, uh, once you go far enough that everything is these little vibrating strings. Um, and, uh, there's like, it's, there's 10 dimensions that, you know, that things can theoretically live, be in, which is, you know, we live in, I think the fourth, it's either the third or fourth dimension, but uh, eventually, like, you, when you get up to the tenth dimension, it, it's that you can be in any place in on any time. Like, basically, you can be in all places at once on all different timelines. Uh, you can be, it's God, basically. You see everything in every time on every, so every decision that is made, every, you know, every split off of the timeline, theoretically, it's possible uh, within that, that theory quantum mechanics apparently and this is what i just learned is that uh instead of breaking down into uh little string like little strings or whatever uh everything breaks down into basically like this uh, what they describe as like a cloudy material of probability saying that Anything like nothing is anywhere. This is quantum entanglement, more so that that I was looking into. But uh, basically, nothing 
is anything until it's observed through a filter. So we're, as human beings, we are uh, just a multitude of filters, which is sight, smell, hearing, feeling, tasting, and probably something else I don't know about. But so like it's, it's the, and, and everything breaks down to the probability of where it could be or what it could be. Um, and I, I, like I said, I've just started looking into this. So uh, if there's physics uh, people that are listening and they're yelling at their, their pod, 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 pod coin, hopefully, uh, app right now, I apologize. I will look deeper into this, but it's really interesting because like it's, it comes down to the idea that there is no, there's potentially, there is no space or time. Uh, and everything is like, because we've lived in a world where uh, we've been told that these things are, this table is here, everything is here, and, and, and when we turn our back, that table will still be there. Uh, we've created a situation where that's how it is. But in terms of, uh, at its deepest, like, you know, basic level, we could, like, nothing really is until it's observed, in which case uh, we can create what we want out of the universe. Uh, and, and quantum entanglement has this idea that um, simul- there's simultaneous, like, because it's all probability, then, then when you filter and look at something, it actually has an effect on, on, a, on an identical atom or something uh, some distance away. It doesn't matter how long. It could be uh, 100 light years or whatever, which, which technically that's, I'm crossing the theories right now because light years is space time and this is quantum mechanics but you get what i'm saying i don't <laughs> uh i'm just saying like so observing one thing here uh actually solidifies something over here in the same way because you've observed it over here and nothing is solid until it's observed uh or filtered into you know herds the scene whatever that create like then it's no longer it's no longer a probability of something it is, uh, it, it solidifies because you've seen it, so you know what it is. It's like rolling a dice. Like, there's a probability of a one through a six, but once you roll the dice and look at it, you know what it is. So it's no longer, one, it can no longer be a one through six anymore. It has to be a three if that's what it rolls. Uh, and, like, so the idea of quantum entanglement is that, say you have two dice, um, there is a probability that they because they're because once you shake the dice and you can't see what they what they actually roll as until you look at them, um, they always have the possibility of being the same even though they're separate. Uh, and quantum quantum entanglement just states that uh, essentially once you observe one. Uh, the other, like, and I don't have a full understanding of this, so I apologize to people who do. Uh, it really does get complicated, but it's really interesting because if everything does actually break down into this like probability fog, it means that if we can reprogram the way we think about the world, we could actually change what's going on around us. And honestly, quantum mechanics is the way that the world is starting to work because that's how these integrated systems, uh, like China right now has a... A quantum mechanic based uh, security system that essentially, instead of having it with a computer where you have binary, where it's a one or a zero on or off, it can be a, a, like, it's probability based. So uh, each of those little uh, transistors could either be a one or a zero or a one and a zero. Therefore, it's it's hard to explain without having some type of visual aid, but. And I don't, and I'm not the person to uh, to be explaining it because I literally have about you've explained about four minutes worth of stuff, a couple articles and a documentary under my belt. Some people have been studying this for their entire life, so I'm going to stop. Look into it; it's interesting. Oh, and we, you know, at least uh, that we 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 killed some time. <laughs> But it is difficult for me because now I'm I'm literally like shifting. I always used to be like fuck quantum mechanics. You know, space-time, Einstein. Really? String theory. Yeah, I really didn't want to, I didn't want to uh, subscribe to quantum mechanics. I really, I liked, you know, but the more I look into quantum mechanics, the more it makes sense and the more it... it uh, you just do this in your spare time? Doesn't everybody? No. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. I, I like to look into that kind of stuff. 
Huh. But uh, yeah. you know what I did in my, my day today? I worked. Learned how to fart jingle bells. Nope. I worked. That's not till Christmas. Sorry. I uh, had to stay. I, I went into work early. Had to stay late at work. Then I drove to my son's open house. What did you think about on the drive? You didn't think about quantum mechanics versus... I was thinking about how pissed off I was about certain situations. Oh. Well, that's a good use of time, too. (laughs) And I I was mad, and I, I listened to some music. It made me feel a little better to blast some music, some angry music. Not jam band? (laughs) <laughs> no. And then, uh, I don't know, I took Phil on a walk, pretty long walk. Felt bad for him because he's kind of cooped up all day today, and I was like, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I didn't get your message until... I sent you that yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I've been a little... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Um, yeah, you can do that tomorrow if you want. I don't care. Um, yeah, I took him he on a walk. He heard his name. Did he? Is he at the door? Yeah, he just... He's afraid of the stairs. Feels a little. He's a little skittish. He's a wuss. That's he's, yeah. Skittish is the nice way to say it. He's a pussy. Yeah, he really is. Like he is afraid of like. He just stared at the steps yesterday. No, uh, that's. In the gazebo, there's a little porch. If you had a ghost, then, he would. He would he, instead of alerting you to it, he'd hide under the bed. Yeah, he just he just stared like stared at the steps, and you could tell he wanted to come up. And I was like, dude, just do it. Come on. And he just sat there and sat there. And I'm like, well, I was in like, like with idiot. the kitchen for the longest time. He still doesn't like going into the Like anytime. So anytime he's eating or drinking and I walk either from the living room to the kitchen or the kitchen to the living room and like walk by him, he, he runs away because he thinks I'm going to put him in his kennel <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. He just, he just, who knows why? Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a little bitch, but he's a boy. Yeah, bitch is a female dog, but he's not one. You can let him in if you want. Oh, I don't. I don't know how long. I mean, he's been out there for a little bit, enjoying the outside world. Nice yeah, night. He, he should learn to enjoy it out there. Mm-hmm. Most of some dogs get trapped inside their whole their whole life. They don't get to adventure. They don't get to. Uh, I don't know. I uh, um. So when did you when did you did you text me or call me after the walk? During the walk. During the walk, okay. I, I was making my way around the block, and then I saw it's Pickleball Tuesday. I know. I heard him playing when I rode Pickleball past. Tuesday, buddy. And uh, so, I had, uh, so I was like, oh, I should call Rob. We should record. Did I say, did I say anything last, on Friday that I joined, uh, I joined the meetup app? You didn't talk about this. Yeah, so I joined the oh, meetup that's like Oh, that's just like a professional thing, isn't it? Or is that like a, like a what up? Girl, it, it's app. no, it's not for. It's just for people to meet. It's meeting new people. It's not about dating. Oh, the so, people in your life aren't good enough. No, the people. Someone that life. brings you into a creative project, maybe that they were working on for a while, and uh, they they like the flow, the chemistry, the conversations. And he's like, maybe maybe we could do this every week. What do you think? And that's and great they, for me, and I love it. But uh, but then he, you know, that this hypothetical person might have gone and found some hypothetical person named Carissa, and uh, wow, you know, hypothetically, I still all- touch your dick, <laughs> but only when we're recording. <laughs> Uh, no, it's, you know, it's just, uh, you know, you click on what your interests are and, and, uh, it's just a way to, like, can I, can I look at yours? Yeah. I won't read your, I won't, I won't. Oh, there's no profile on there. I just, you, they just give you, they send you updates to like the groups that you click on. So I have like kayaking. Um, I have some like mysticism stuff on there and, uh, some film, like, wa- some like what? watching and discussing. Mysticism? Mo- yeah. You know, like tarot card readings and, and that you're into stuff. that. It interests me. I mean... So are you going to, like, start dating Miss Cleo? It's not about dating. It's just about learning. I need to relearn how to meet people. I mean, we talked about this. When I was at the pool, I couldn't say, hey, how's it going? To somebody. And uh, Because so there's... I'm trying to reintroduce myself into group world society. Well, that's know? good. Good for you. Yeah. Why don't you go to a show with me? You can meet people there. I'm very good at walking up to people and just randomly talking to them. You can join in on the fun. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, I used to be good at that. So, I, but it's you go to I'm, I, me and you listen to different types of music. Like I listen to good music. I didn't say not good music. I said different <laughs> types of music. Drew, maybe could, if my friends were better listeners, I wouldn't need to go to meetup. <laughs> I could I could introduce you to a whole new world of tunes. You could, and you have. I mean, you've uh, you've shown me music that's, uh, but it's just it's too fast for my taste. Listen to the Menzingers. The Menzingers. Yeah. M e n zinger. M e n z i n g e r s. Yes. Okay. They're not too fast. All right. They're fucking really good. All right. I will listen. I love to them. them. I saw them uh, not that long ago, and I'm going to see them again in October. Nice. Yep. At the Majestic. Favorite spot. Honestly, I was thinking about going to uh, asking you if you wanted to go see the dollop, but uh, I have to make sure that I'm going to not be in a financial mess when they, they come around. Yeah. They're going to be at Madison and Milwaukee. I'm jealous. And when are, when are we going to have shows in Madison or Milwaukee? We just got to book them. What? Really? I it doesn't mean anybody will be there. Won't we have to pay to do that? or no? Probably. We'll probably lose money. No. Oh. But we'll still get the uh, sensation of somebody saying, uh, uh, are you guys ready for some casual conversation? We could do a strange brew tour. And then I'll be out there and I'll go, yeah. It'll just be me. <laughs> we could do the strange brew tour. Yeah. That'd be sweet. And then we could do it because this, this is one thing like uh, if we want to plagiarize the dollop, which is not necessarily a horrible idea. When we, when we do <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> they can't really say anything because then they'd be hypocrites. Uh, <laughs> but when we do the strange brew tour, then wherever we go, we look up strange stuff from around, uh, around that town that we're going to. Can you let him in? Yeah. Just because he's barking. Well, who knows what he's barking at? Maybe it's a rabid rabbit or a, a rabid uh, uh, other creature. Come on, dipshit. Come on in. Come on. Come on, dum-dum. Did you get yourself stuck? Of course he did. Fucking moron. No, you weren't. He wasn't stuck. Oh. Oh, Phil. Chill. Dude, you're going to strangle yourself. What if I like it a little bit? I like to strangle myself. Yeah. Haven't you heard of auto fix? Asphyxiation? Erotica? You got that? Stupidest design ever. Hey, man, talk to the people at Fleet Farm. You bought it. You encourage them to make more of these. Well, if that's all they have, what other options do I have? I think Phil likes you more than he likes Different me. store. That's like an uncle, though, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> you know? Do you like your uncle more than your dad? I, I uh, don't answer it. <laughs> I'm just mean, you know, like uh, one person shows up and they're like, what's up? Yeah, you can be on the couch. What the fuck, Phil? Hey. And he's like, that guy always says, what's the fuck to me? Who and, gives you and, treats, Phil? Yeah, I don't give him treats. Who feeds you, Phil? Who, pick up, who picks up your poop, Phil? Hmm? You think he cares about his poop? I thought we had, I thought we had a better relationship than this. You're a real piece of shit, Phil. <laughs> You're a real piece of shit. I don't think so. You were, yeah. a, you were abandoned in the streets of uh, Alabama, and then I adopted your ass. And this is how you repay me? What Look at me when I'm talking to you, Phil. <laughs> he's not. He's giving you the cold shoulder. You're a real dick. You're a real dick. I see how it is. All right, whatever. So, uh, yeah, what were we talking about then? I don't know. Me going on tour. Oh, yeah, Strange Brew yeah. Tour. Do you think we could do that? We could like arrange something in a small theater. If if you hit the right towns, because um, like okay, say in Milwaukee, right? Yeah. There's things that are always going on, and people are always looking for things. Like they don't necessarily know what they're doing. They just go, hey, this thing. If you advertise well enough, people will go, yeah, I'll go check this out. Yeah. And that's a good way. To, that's how tours help like increase, uh, you know, your widespread appeal. Can I can I tell you one of my stand up bits that I've been thinking about? Of course. You wanna, wanna, let me let me brainstorm it. Let me workshop it with you. All right. All right. So recently, I got a call from an employee of mine. Yeah. Not a call. Not a call. So the, the employee didn't show up to work. No call. No show. He's a really old individual. So I. Was, so you started this prematurely by saying he gave you a call, but really it was I know. The exact so opposite. all right, let's 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 start over. Okay. Um, I was at work, and the, an employee of mine 
didn't show up for work. He's older. He uh, has medical conditions already. He wasn't here, which is very unusual for him because he's pretty punctual. He's there every day. He goes to come do the job. Uh, my boss walks in and goes, you know, where's so-and-so? And I go, I don't know. He's not here. So either he's dead or he's sick. Jokingly said that. Not a good um, joke to make. Later, later I got a call um, or a message saying, hey, so-and-so's daughter called. You need to call her back about the situation that's going on. And I was like, oh, God. You know? Yep. So then I call her. I call his daughter, and she goes, um, well, my my mom is in the hospital. I go, oh, thank God. Bad. Because I You thought, said that to her? I, yeah. I'm like, oh, thank God. It's it's your mom, not your dad. <laughs> so now, you know, I, I, I felt better. That's not that good, is it? Fuck. Oh, that's the joke? It's a joke because, like I said... Oh, I guess it's not that... Yeah, sorry, I don't mean to... I'm not trying to be a dick. Uh, I said he might be... Because I said, oh, he's dead or... He's either sick or he's dead. Yeah. And then it turns out it was his wife. So I said, oh, thank God. Because I thought I cursed... I thought I put some bad juju on him, but no. Your mom's dead. Yeah, why didn't he call? I don't know. He didn't speak English that well. Is this a true story? Yes. Okay. Well, you know, yeah, you need to work on the on on the punchline, but there's something there. All right. I'm just being. I don't know. Well, off to a great start. It's how. Hey, this is how it starts. It's how it works. You got a workshop. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. You should see some of the jokes that I have written. They're horrible. (laughs) How about? uh, You liked my internet joke, didn't you? Internet joke. Uh, when I was in high school, my mom didn't get the internet until the day after I graduated high school. So anytime I had to go to do research, I always okay, had to yep. go to my grandparents' house. And do you know how awkward it is to have your grandpa walk in with your pants down? I did like that joke. Yes. And then I say, hey, old man, don't you know how to knock? And he goes, Drew, you're in the kitchen. Yes. Yeah. But the- See, that one I could tell is a joke. <laughs> The other one just sounds like a story uh, where you say everything wrong. Well, that's why yeah, you got to work on it. So, I mean, you, if you, you, you could push it even further and, and, and make it so that you say things even wronger. And then the, the joke, the, the truck nuts joke. I got to work on that a little bit. Yeah. Which, uh, because it is true. I feel like the people, the individuals who buy testicles for their trucks... Like if you if you think of somebody, you you drive or you drive by somebody and they got a, a a fucking they're driving a truck with testicles hanging from it. Yep. Like you are going to assume Phil that, is going crazy to get some of this beer. I'm sorry. Yeah, they're going to assume that I at least me that they're a redneck, and they're most likely rather homophobic, which is ironic because at one point in time to get those truck nuts onto their truck they have to manhandle a fabricated fake pair of testicles. Yes. Which, in a sense, is pretty gay. Yes. And I don't mean that in a derogatory sense, but, right? I agree. So it defeats the purpose that they're, of what they're, and that's what where they're all about. I, I think where you need to work on that joke is the conversation, because you're good at doing characters. So you do the conversation between yeah. the truck nut salesman and the guy who says, you know, hey, I ain't gay. I just need some nuts for my truck. And it also, the nuts, you know, like I've noticed that proportionately, like in proportion to the they have rest them at of the 16 size. 16 inch truck nuts now. <laughs> but still, I feel like. Yes, those are, I know the measurement. Those are small. Relative. For, re- relative to the rest of the size of the truck. Well, maybe they just went swimming. So they're just saying... I mean, in Wisconsin in the winter, that makes sense. Right, I guess. That, that does make sense. Uh, I, it's like, but then it also goes back to the fact of only, only dudes would do this. Only dudes would put testicles on cards. You don't see women putting vaginas on their passats. There, but there was actually a law passed in... About truck nuts? About uh, more than just truck nuts, about... 
<laughs> putting any type of because they didn't want truck nuts to spread to truck <laughs> vaginas and truck boobs. So a uh, conservative uh, politician did- actually did try to get a law passed where you could not put any uh, any human body anatomy parts onto your truck or car or automobile. Well, I'm okay with that. I'd, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know why that needs to be a law, but apparently it does in this day and age. And I'm. I'm okay. I, I mean, uh, just like, um, just like when you're watching porn, you don't want to see the nuts from behind the whole time. I don't want to be driving behind uh, a truck and seeing those nuts the whole time. You know, it's like you're taking the worst. The worst. They're various colors, though. Some of them. Sometimes they're blue. Blue balls. Um, sometimes they're the tan color, you know, they're dark To ones. me, that doesn't help the situation, but that's just me. I mean, the flame ones. I just don't understand why you would pay money to put balls on your vehicle or any form, for any it's anatomy least, for it's that. The, I mean, uh, male or female, balls have got to be the least... Aesthetically att- pleasing. Yeah, the least attractive anything. It's just like, there's just wrinkly skin with... These fucking nuts in them. They're not, yeah, they're not attractive. No one's ever looked at a set of testicles and said, damn, those are cute. But some people have, and they said, I want those on my truck. (laughs) They want, I got big balls. I wonder if anybody's gone in there and been like, you know, these just ain't hairy enough for me. (laughs) I just... Like is it is it an impulse buy? Is it something you we're, go? We're, yeah, to we're the on the store? same. Yeah, we're on the same side of this debate. But uh, I'm just I, I'm just I, wondering. I want to know the thought process of somebody who approaches, who like one day wakes up and goes, you know what? I want to go online and buy testicles for my vehicle. Well, no. What, what they want, what they're trying to say is they have my, balls. My, my, my truck has nuts. My truck won't back down from a fight, and will will talk to any lady truck. No matter how uh, pretty she is, <laughs> my truck's got balls. It yeah. takes chances. I don't. I mean, yeah. It doesn't care about repercussion, cushions. I just don't. I don't. I, I don't get it either. That's why I don't have. You know, uh, I, do I think that some some nice uh, truck nuts would look nice on the Cadillac? No, they wouldn't. Uh, yeah, they probably wouldn't. In my opinion, they don't provide any sex appeal by any means. I would question any individual who saw them and was like, this person is more attractive because they have testicles on their vehicle. You ever see a low rider with truck nuts and they're just dragging on the <laughs> ground? <laughs> and there's like an 80 year old man yeah. Yeah. <laughs> driving it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I had this conversation, like I had this thought process the other like last week only because I'm like yeah we talked about this on yeah, Friday um, off 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 show I think yeah cuz I'm I'm behind this car or this truck and it's got testicles on it and then I'm like do they swing yeah they they hang they dangle they they go left right up down whatever whatever you need them to do they they do it um, um but they're just fake and I, mean, uh, I could think of many better uh, better things to hang off the back of your Jesus truck Jesus Christ He's fucking Does anybody put like wind chimes on the back of their truck No we should we should uh, we should pitch some truck nuts that that are are wind chimey. They make ding dong noises. The fuck is a person out there with a flashlight? It's either that or a car is passing. Dun, dun, dun. He's got an axe. <laughs> we gotta go. That was weird. It looked to me like somebody just pulled into the driveway over there. Possibly. I think it was a flashlight. Oh, right? it was. Okay. Someone? I'm not doing well with one headlight or one light today. You know, I thought that that motorcycle with was one a headlight. Wallflowers, good band. See, I like them. They got one song. They've got like, they've got four songs on that album alone that were big. Three Marlenas, one headlight. Uh, uh, oh, I only know that one. I only know one headlight. Okay, well, through my anus. They have a song <laughs> called "Through My Anus." Is that no, what you said? Three Marlenas. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Sixth Avenue Heartache. Sixth Avenue Heartache. Josephine. What is Sixth Avenue Heartache? That sounds familiar. Uh, send, yeah. Send me, send me a bit. Um, Serenade me. Let me think here. Uh, s- uh, lights go out. S- ba- 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 <laughs> da- the sings out loud. 
I don't. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Sixth Avenue. It's, oh. uh, it's, uh, it's. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, I know. Sixth Avenue heartbreak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I think I, you, I'm a bad singer. Everybody, I, I apologize for what you just had to listen to. <laughs> uh, I'll try to never do that again to any of you. I wish I was a good singer. Not many people have heard me sing, Rob. No, nah, most. No, nah, that's the most uh, people that will ever hear me sing. I've only done karaoke once in my life, maybe twice. Chris has heard me sing. Yeah. Yep. See, I sing to myself all the time, but I just, you know, it's not good. If you could, like, be, what would you rather be? Would you rather be a hip hop dancer or an opera singer? Oh, professionally, like professionally, you're getting paid to do these things. Opera singer or hip hop dancer? I'm going to go hip hop dancer. Uh, you know, I probably would too, just because that means that you could bust that out non-professionally as well. Yeah, like no one's impressed by... You're never like, going to get a chance to do some opera singing at a party. Unless you bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> unless like you're just like one of those people that goes... You know, they're talking about politics or they're in a deep conversation. Like, hey, you know, I sing opera, right? Uh, that would be like, you'd have to like, where people go like, oh, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm Drew. And I, then I'd have to, Hi, I'm Robert, opera singer. Opera singer. And, the, and it's like, you, you do it, you bring it up so much at every party with the same group of people, but there's one new person. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I sing opera. And we're just like, yeah, Rob, why don't you show me? You, you just keep going. People don't believe I'd be good at opera until they hear me sing. And this is like, and you just keep put like pu- well, pushing it until they till they go. Well, let me hear you sing. That. Well, Rob, uh, you wanna you, you wanna Stop sing or something? Me. You want you wanna sing the opera? You know, Doctor Drew. Yeah, he, not a doctor. He sings opera. He is a doctor. Oh, I'm thinking Doctor Oz, not a doctor. Oh, I was gonna say Doctor Drew's a doctor. <laughs> doctor Oz, you don't think he's an actor? Doctor Phil's not a real doctor. Doctor Oz is not. Doctor Oz is a fraud. You you know what's really crazy though. Dr. Dre, podiatrist. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Dre knows what he's talking <laughs> he look, he about. He looks at <laughs> Did you know that uh, Snoop Dogg recently broke the, the Guinness Book of World Record for the largest gin and juice? That's not surprising to me. Uh, Did you know that there's a company happy. that gets hired to literally go and help companies promote themselves by uh, creating records for them to break? And they do it for for governments, for uh, for countries. They do it for big companies, all in the, and it's all bull crap. There was somebody that actually came up with a record to break that was a legitimate record, but because it wasn't a record that was family fun, I forget what it was, uh, what the record was, but the uh, Guinness wouldn't even. Oh, it was it was uh, last week with John Oliver. They they were gonna the biggest cake, the biggest baked cake with the. Uh, with the image of a, of a po- political leader getting thrown off a horse or something like that. And uh, they were like, well, we're not going to send you because uh, the, the leader of Korea, North Korea likes to, br- or some place likes to break records, but they create them for that government. They create the records that he breaks. It's not even like, you know, uh, but the Guinness book of world. Stop, Phil. Phil, stop it. Uh, but the, yeah, the Guinness Book, of, they were like, no, we're only, we only create records that are family fun. And it's like, yeah, for that foreign dictatorship that you created it for, that was, that's fun for the whole family. Yeah. Phil got Every, it. everything is corrupt and tainted in this world. So Phil's don't pretty, love anything and all hope is dead. Phil's big. He got big. He's not a puppy anymore. He's still a puppy. He's going to get a lot bigger. Little douchebag. Phil. Phil, why don't you come by me? Huh? Jesus Christ, I didn't see fucking maul me, dude. Well, see something in the mic. Now he's by you. Are you happy now? No, I'm actually more miserable. (laughs) Yeah, he's kind of, uh, he gets in the way more than anything. You're smothering me, Phil. He's the most, he's very cuddly. He loves to cuddle. Yep. Do you like it when dogs lick you? No, I not hate so it. Much. I hate it. I don't like it at all. I've seen where that tongue's been. Yeah. Well, there's bacteria on that tongue that takes care of that stuff. Well, I still, you know, you eat shit. 
Yeah, actually, Phil's never eaten shit that I know of. He eats ants like crazy. He likes to eat the ants. Yeah. He's like an ant eater. His name should be Arthur. No? Okay, he's a nardvark. Never mind. Okay. (laughs) Is that, I was thinking of the guy, what's what's, what's the Hey Arthur show? Hey Arnold. (laughs) No, I'm thinking of Arthur. Arthur, the the yardvark. Is that what he was in that that animated show for kids? he's a nardvark. He didn't even have a snout. (laughs) Because aardvarks don't have snouts. Anteaters? They're, they're, they're different. An uh, aardvark's oh, not an anteater. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. See, yeah, you, I was look, you look into aardvarks, I look into quantum mechanics. I thought I thought it was... I thought the same thing, though, Arthur. I was like, wait, wait, wait he's not an anteater. So, that joke... Yeah, uh, we, uh, we, yeah we, well, we're what not perfect. Stop it. That's why we're not playing to... That's not why we're not getting sued for plagiarism yet. One day, some I hope days, we get sued. Yeah, someday, that's our goal. They're not getting sued. They're just getting called out. Yeah. I hope one day we can get called out for plagiarism. Yeah. Well, we called ourselves out. Does that count? Dude, no. I don't know what the fuck he is doing, but he needs to stop. You need to stop. Do you think three's, uh, three's a crowd when we record? Are you counting as Phil? I'm talking about Phil. I'm talking about anything. Do you think that it throws us off, our game? Depends on what the topic is. I mean, when and then who's talking, I guess. It depends on... No. I don't know. Madison just wanted to be a part of it last week. That's why yeah, I, I know. included her. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not giving my... In, 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 I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm asking you the question. I'm not projecting. No, I don't right think... Right now, I'm talking about Phil. Any more than three... Yeah, Phil's... I don't know what the fuck he's doing, but I don't... I don't like it. He can go back by you. <laughs> but, no, uh, that's a good place for you. Yeah, Rabba. Uh, it's uh, I'm, 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 I, hey, remember how you told me to uh, that I should read books for fun? Yeah, uh, I'm reading a, a nonfiction book. What book? It's called Midnight. Okay, and it's about uh, it's about human evolution and uh, Jesus. It's but it's a Christ. fiction book where it backfires and and creates a race of. Uh, not a race, but uh, these new, the new people they call them, but they can regress instead of... Uh, Are they crab people? Where they where they kind of become like werewolves, only uh, they Taste. can do it at will. And uh, But when they're in their human form, they're like more logical and, and less emotional and all that. But uh, it's a pretty good book so far. Crab people. Do they taste like crab, talk like people? No. Oh, bummer. Um, Rob, it's past my bedtime. I got laundry. I got to go hang. This is another short episode. What are Shorter. We 40? 40, 47. Yeah. I've, considering we had nothing to talk about. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. You should thank me for covering four minutes on quantum mechanics, all of which is probably not right, but hey, send your emails to Drew. Somewhere out there, somebody is going to hear that and they're going to be like, sounds interesting. I want to research it. And then that person is going to research and research and research. Hey, they're going to get the, a yeah. PhD. They're going to get... Um, a great job. They're going to study a lot. And then one day the world will change and they'll be like, where did you find this answer to the well, meaning yeah, of why, life? Why, why did you get interested in quantum mechanics? And they'll be like, well, you know, you know I was Dudes with Bruce. listening to this podcast called Dudes with Bruce on a Porch. And uh, I was drawn by the jam band beer that they Yeah. And, and, and they were talking about it. And then I started to think, what if they weren't on a porch? And then I was so that, <laughs> that led me down the the uh, quantum mechanic. Uh, yeah, and now I've uh, I've cured every disease in the world. Yeah, goddamn, I'm smart. Thanks, Robin Drew. Yeah, buy their merch. Tpublic.com. Search dudes with brews. Donate your pod coins to feeding world, ending world hunger, or get an Amazon gift card. Phil, that sounds like as good a place to end it as any. Okay. Oh, we never said drink it or dump it. Oh, shit. Well, yeah, good thing we're still recording. Okay. Uh, as soon as I said that, we stopped recording. Um, um, we drank uh, Jam Band by uh, some brewery, Boulevard Brewing. Um, I say it's good. I drink Boulevard it. Brewing drink on it. something street. Drink it, you know. I liked it. It's a berry ale. Yeah, I didn't drink it all, but I will drink it all. It's very good. Uh, Phil was Phil made me spill it so that he could try and lick it off my pants. Yeah, Phil's got a disease. He was like he was up on the table trying to smell it. 
And then he was like, I'm going to make, make Rob only, spill it. Not only is Phil a piece of shit, he's an he's alcoholic. An alcoholic. Yeah, that's why he's, he, you know, he's fun for a minute and then he's hard to stand. Just like an alcoholic. Yep. And he pees somewhere sometimes. Hey. We well, all do. You know, I say to pee, don't drink that. That would be, unless you're into it. Me personally, uh, I'll pass. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the jam band over pee any day. What well, if your pee looked like jam band? Would you try it? Does it smell like jam band? Yes. Because it smells, jam band smells really good. Yeah. That'd be a tough thing to, you know, I might, I might in my head go, I don't want to, but somewhere in my heart, I'd say I have to. Pew, pew, audio. Goodbye, everyone.